Hey everyone, today I want to talk about, holy smokes, is that a dragon? Oh wait, nope, false alarm, it's just a dinosaur. That's a relief. Hey wait a second, don't worry, this lovely lady is my good friend Meraxes, and she's one of the most incredible dinosaurs to ever live. But let's be honest, that's not why you clicked this video. You probably saw Game of Thrones and dinosaur in the same sentence, and well, here you are. Now, for those of you who just want to know about the name, the paleontologist who discovered the animal was a huge fan of the fantasy series A Song of Fire and Ice. And rather than going the usual route of calling it some Latin gibberish, he decided to nerd out a little. To which I have to say, bravo, 10 out of 10. I like to think that if I too found a giant prehistoric murder lizard, I also would go for something mythical. But we'll circle back to its naming and discovery later. Because folks, dinosaurs come in all shapes and sizes, but few are as wonderful and weird as Meraxes. It had a massive head like T-Rex, a giant claw on her second toe, and a bizarre back structure that gives off serious Spinosaurus vibes. Put simply, it's weird, and that's what we're all about on this channel. So today, we're taking a look at the dragon dinosaur known as Meraxes, and discovering how this prehistoric oddity terrorized the lands of primeval South America. Don't forget to hit that like button, and let's dive into this. Our story begins in 2012, which somehow feels like decades ago. Anyone else miss those days? Back when we were all convinced the Mayan calendar was going to end civilization? It was a simpler time. But while others were panic buying canned goods, in South America, a team of paleontologists led by Dr. Juan Canale made their way down to the Wing Cool Formation in hopes of studying the extinct ecosystem of the late Cretaceous period. Now, for those of you who are unfamiliar with the Wing Cool Formation, don't worry, that's just a fancy term for a bunch of rocks in Argentina that did a really good job at preserving dead stuff. And these rocks? Absolute goldmine. We've already found a ton of awesome stuff such as Giganotosaurus and the granddaddy of them all, Argentinosaurus, one of the largest dinosaurs to ever live. But before we get to the discovery of Meraxes, unfortunately, I have some bad news for you all. Despite what TV would have you believe, fossil expeditions aren't all that thrilling. You don't just hike up a hill, poke the ground a few times, and then boom, look at that, a nearly fully intact dino skeleton found on day one. That would be ridiculous. No, no, finds like this can take months, sometimes even years of grueling work, sifting through rocks, meticulously brushing off dirt, all while contemplating your life choices. So naturally, when Dr. Canale and his team set out, they were ready for the long haul. Endless days of sweat, sunburns, and maybe, if they were lucky, they might just find some fragments of teeth. And so, the team set out on what would surely be a long and treacherous journey. Oh hey look, what's that thing? Check this out, it looks like the skull of a massive theropod. Wait, what? Look everyone, it's a nearly complete skeleton. It might even belong to an entirely new species. How lucky are we? Are you kidding me? They just stumbled upon Meraxes on day one? How am I supposed to milk this for content if there's nothing to exploit? Now, before you get too excited, I have a confession. Digging up fossils doesn't really look like this. You don't just whip out a shovel or a pickaxe and go to town. The actual process is much slower and methodical. How slow are we talking? We won't know until we get started. But that's gonna take forever! Yep, and once the bones are finally out of the ground, the real fun begins. Painstakingly comparing all the bones we found to other similar dinosaurs so we can figure out where on the family tree our girl belongs to. But before we get lost in all that sciencey stuff, there's something very important we need to take care of. We have to come up with a clever name for her. And this is where we get into the fun part. Because as I mentioned earlier, Dr. Canale was a pretty big Game of Thrones fan. You all know the type. Probably has a room full of merch and refers to Amelia Clark as Khaleesi. Talk about a nerd. Hey, wait a second. Naturally, when he discovered this massive dinosaur, he named it after one of the dragons from the series, Meraxes. Now, I'm sure a lot of you enjoyed watching all seven seasons of Game of Thrones, and some of you might even be watching the follow-up prequel show, House of Dragon. So, you might have noticed that none of the dragons in either series are called Meraxes. And if this is you, hand over your nerd card, because Meraxes was one of the three most important dragons in the entire series. I won't bore you with all the details. After all, this channel is about hard-hitting scientific accuracy, not dragons. But long story short, Meraxes was one of the three dragons that conquered the entire continent prior to the events of both shows. You know those giant titans Vagar and Balerion? Well, Meraxes was right there alongside them at number three. Now, you might be wondering, Napkin, why are we going off on this tangent? We already know this dinosaur is named after a dragon. What's the point? Well, let's take a look at the other giant Carcarodontosaurus discovered in the region. We have Giganotosaurus, who was the largest of the three, Mapusaurus, who have colored green so that he looks more like Vagar, and of course, we have our girl Meraxes. Are you seeing the parallel? Because that's definitely what I'm going for. Anyways, apparently Dr. Canale thought the same thing, and thus, he named the species Meraxes gigas, with the word gigas being a Greek word for giant. You know, because just like Giganotosaurus, she was gigantic. Real creative, guys. So there we have it. 
a giant theropod with an awesome name that completes the package. I guess there's only one thing left to do, right? Let's compare it to T-Rex. Okay, you all knew this was coming. Anytime a new dinosaur gets discovered, the first thing anyone does is compare it to the king himself. But is that fair? Absolutely not. But what else are we supposed to compare it to? You two wait your turn. Anyways, I can understand the comparison. After all, there's a whole lot of Tyrannosaur envy going on here. Meraxes had a large head, strong thick legs, and just like T-Rex, small pint-sized arms. So naturally, with all their similarities, we can conclude that Meraxes was in no way related to any Tyrannosaur that ever lived. Wait, what? Yep, turns out there's more than only two flavors of prehistoric bites. The group Meraxes belongs to is called Carcharodontosauria, which is a completely separate branch from the Tyrannosauria group. Now, Carcharodontosaurus have had their fair share of limelight. In fact, some of you might have even recognized this group's superstar, Giganotosaurus, in the recent film, Jurassic World Dominion. But before you get too excited, no. Meraxes wasn't bigger than Giganotosaurus. In fact, if these two were to ever come to blows, Giganotosaurus would absolutely crush Meraxes. Aw oh man, then why aren't we making a video about that one? Alright, marketing. Anyways, to get a better understanding of what makes Meraxes so special, we need to see what separates our family tree, the Carcharodontosaurus, from their long distance cousins, the Tyrannosaurus. Upon first glance, you might be thinking, aren't these just two flavors of the same bitey nightmare? I mean, they both have large oversized heads, hilariously underwhelming arms, and legs that look like they could punt a car into next Tuesday. And to that I say, yeah, I know. Shut up. But seriously, there's no question that these animals share a lot of similarities. After all, they were both the undisputed apex predators of their time and regions. However, if we take a closer look, we see that they're about as similar as a grizzly bear and a saltwater crocodile. Both are terrifying, both have a mouth of scary chompers, but they're built for entirely different lifestyles. Tyrannosaurus were built like linebackers with teeth optimized for pulverizing prey, with a bite force that would even make seal beams nervous. Carcharodontosaurus, on the other hand, were less crush your bones to dust and more slice you into deli meat. Think of them as steak knives with legs. Their skulls were generally longer and filled with serrated teeth both for slicing rather than crushing. And then we get to the arms, which, while still small compared to the rest of their body, were a bit bigger in comparison to Tyrannosaur. And while the Tyrannosaurus only had two stubby little fingers, Carcharodontosaurus had a whopping, oh man, three fingers? Slow down, guys! So while they're similar, you can clearly see that we're dealing with two very different animals. Let's have the fight! We can't. But why not? Jurassic World did it! They did a lot of things. As it turns out, these two hung out in completely different regions, with Tyrannosaurus dominating the northern hemisphere and Carcharodontosaurus sticking mostly to the south, meaning it's unlikely that these two would ever meet. But this video isn't just about any old Carcharodontosaur. It turns out Meraxes had a few tricks up her sleeve that made her unique. Remember how we talked about how Carcharodontosaurus had long skulls compared to their cousins? Well, that's not the case for Meraxes. Her skull was relatively short for a Carcharodontosaur. And strangely, her head was covered in a variety of grooves and abrasions, giving her that dragon-like appearance. Then we have the arms, where Meraxes must have taken one look at those puny hands of T-Rex and said, I'll have what he's having. But none of that can hold a candle to whatever in the blazes we have going on over here. Look at those babies. Outside of Spinosaurus, have you ever seen a dinosaur with a back like this? Quiet, you two. You'll get your turn. Anyways, what's the deal with this strange back? Did Meraxes have a sail? A hunchback? Should we have instead named her Quasimodo? Watch your mouth. The truth is, we can't really say for certain what the purpose of those long backbones was. However, unlike Spinosaurus, these didn't stick out like a sail. In fact, most likely, it wouldn't have even been noticeable outside a small raised bump on her back. So then, what's the point? Well, when you have long bones, you also have more surface area to attach things to. This could be anything from having more muscle fibers for running to having extra places to store fat. Like a camel? Kind of. And if that's the case, this tells us something very interesting about the environment in which Meraxes lived. But we'll get to her environment in a bit. Let's continue discussing her strange physical features. You see, when you have a giant skull to lug around, you need a good counterbalance. This is where a long, thick, sturdy tail can come in handy, as it helps keep these walking seesaws balanced and stable. So, you have to imagine that giving a T-Rex a backpack wouldn't go over too well, which is why Meraxes came up with a clever solution to keep from toppling over. Now, thankfully, she had a bit of help with this. Carcharodontosaurs were already rocking some pretty impressive secondary toe claws, but Meraxes cranked up this adaptation to an 11. Check out that claw! We're approaching raptor status here, but while it's true this claw would have helped Meraxes with some balancing issues, something tells me that having a large sickle-like claw on your foot might have a few other, more, violent applications. After all, what good are oversized feet and giant claws 
if you've got nowhere to go and nothing to eat. So let's talk about Meraxi's neighborhood and her dinner plans. Meraxi's lived in the late Cretaceous period in what is today Argentina. So, needless to say, she would have enjoyed a truly spectacular view of dense trees and floodplains. Sorry, old girl, no rolling grasslands for you. Back in her day, this part of Argentina looked nothing like the windswept plains we see here today. But hey, silver lining, the thick foliage provided excellent cover for her to ambush her unsuspecting prey. Which, speaking of, what in the prehistoric nightmares is that? Right, so, I'm guessing you all knew this was coming. This is Argentinosaurus, the largest dinosaur to ever live. At least I think he is. Is he still the biggest? Hard to say. Anyways, this presents us with a problem. As massive as Meraxes was, there's absolutely no way she was taking down a fully grown Argentinosaurus head on, applied directly to the forehead. I mean, that would be like a house cat trying to bring down an elephant. A very aggressive, very toothy house cat, sure. But still, so then, how would our girl go about hunting? Well, let's take a look at her tool set. First up, the teeth. Unlike T-Rex which had bone crushing chompers, Meraxes had knife-like teeth designed for slicing and dicing. Basically, if T-Rex was a nutcracker, Meraxes was a really angry deli slicer. Next up, the legs. She probably wasn't much of a marathon runner, but she excelled at quick bursts of speed, perfect for ambushing prey. Just like me. And of course, we can't forget the claw. Not as ridiculous as those hooked talons of raptors, but still long enough to do some pretty serious damage, as well as help keep her struggling prey pinned down. So Meraxes wasn't out here sumo wrestling her meals. Instead, she probably utilized a hit and run strategy. Let me break it down for you. First, you wait for the opportune time. Then, when the moment is right, you give it the old slicey slicey and bitey bitey. It's the perfect strategy, and it doesn't matter how big your prey is, eventually it's going down. Or, you know, she probably could have just gone after the juveniles. I guess that's also an option. The truth is, we're not really sure how Meraxes hunted, but the theory I like, and this is highly speculative with absolutely zero fossil evidence to support it, is that Meraxes might have been a pack hunter. What are you talking about, Napkin? What sort of nonsense is this? I'm glad you asked. As we've talked about before, Meraxes was a large Carcharodontosaur who was discovered in the Winkool Formation. And do you know what else we found in that formation? Giganotosaurus? No, wait, even better, Argentinosaurus. All correct. But we've also found the one, the only, Mapusaurus. Who? Mapusaurus is another Carcharodontosaur similar to Meraxes and Giganotosaurus, but with one very important distinction, evidence of pack hunting. What sort of evidence, you ask? Well, Mapusaurus was discovered in a fossil bed along with several of its buddies buried alongside it, which suggests that at the very least, some species of Carcharodontosaurus were capable of social behaviors. And since Meraxes lived not long after Mapusaurus, it's not really a stretch to think she might have followed the same playbook. But what do you all think? Was Meraxes a pack hunter or did she run it solo? Let me know what you think down in the comments. Now, even if Argentinosaurus was a bit too ambitious, there were still plenty of other, more manageable items on the menu. For instance, take a look at Traku Titan. Basically, an Argentinosaurus, but fun size. Well, fun size in a sense that it was still insanely big, but at least this one wasn't a walking skyscraper. Still, bringing down a large sauropod is no easy task. And even though Meraxes could snack on smaller prey, evidence suggests that there were far fewer medium-sized herbivores in her region compared to her cousins up north. Which means, brace yourself, our girl might have gone through long periods with an empty tummy. Wait, so you're telling me she didn't have any snacks? That's terrible. Don't worry, it turns out that Meraxes might have had a secret weapon to survive those long periods where food was scarce. Remember earlier when we talked about that weird backbone structure? Well, one theory suggests that those long bones might have been used to support a hump-like structure of fat storage. Think of it like a prehistoric backpack similar to what a camel has. This adaptation would have helped Meraxes power through those tough times where food was short, helping her run on reserves until something edible walked into her strike zone. How cool is that? But is this really what those impressive back muscles are used for? I mean, sure, if we compare her back to a camel's back, there are some similarities. But wouldn't it make more sense to compare Meraxes to one of her own family members? Whoa, talk about a fashionista. That's almost as crazy as the sail on the back of Spinosaurus. Anyways, it should come to no surprise that those strange vertebrae on Meraxes might not have been just for fat storage. Much like her cousin, its real purpose could have been even stranger. But unfortunately, we're out of time. So I guess we'll have to leave the story of why dinosaurs keep evolving sails for another video. Until then, I want to thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed this video and would like to see more, please consider subscribing to my channel. And don't forget to bring snacks.